G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Today I'm going to show you how to paint that photo you saw in the opening credits. And we'll get the size of the canvas there going. And I also want to put some colours that I'm using going up the screen. If you don't have anything the same, you just use something similar to get yourself started. Then you can slowly, throughout your journey, get everything you really want, okay? And later on, I'm going to show you this picture that I'm referencing from. And I want to say a big thank you to and it's so for the reference photo we're using today. So come on over here and we'll get right into it. So I've always wanted to paint something like this. Now I want to go through the processes with you so you'll understand what's going on in my mind because we want to get the background on first. This top, that's the top of the water. This is the inside body of the water. This is the light coming through. I want to, all these things are important to create. At the top, we need this glare here because that's the point of entry where the glare is coming through. Okay, so I'm going to show you in this video how we get all this done onto the canvas. And I've never done it before, but I'm going to do it in this video. I want to get all those colors, those fluorescent colors within that jellyfish. And we're going to call it a moon jelly. So here's our canvas. I've got it laid a landscape style instead of upright portrait layout. And our top surface is from about here. Now I'm gonna draw the lines there because this is a tutorial just so you'll know. So this is gonna be pretty much in my blue color there. That area is going to be the top surface of the water. Now it's important in that top surface of the water to get out splices and slices like this. Now you might hear me start using the word infinity a lot. Infinity is just that kind of procedure there, okay? So that's the kind of stroke I'm doing when I might be mentioning infinity, because the infinity, I'm pretty sure it's a sideways number eight, isn't it? Now I wanna prime up my canvas with some soft body titanium white. I simply call it craft white, but because in the acrylic, it's easy to slide your colors over this instead of a dry raw canvas. The way I paint, it's easier that way. So I wanna get this all over. Now you don't want this too thick on there. I'm, I might look thick here and there, but I'm spreading it all over, getting it all into the tooth of the canvas. And then I'll get to the tip of this putter on a brush. And then hopefully the camera can pick up all those scrapes and scratches and brush marks into that. Now I'm gonna stroke it left and right because that's the way the water is looking in the picture there. Now looking back over here, I'm gonna put the lighter color on my canvas first and then I can bring the darker color and stamp it into it. So I've just cleaned my putter on a brush and I wanna grab the turquoise. Mine is phalo turquoise to be exact. And I'm putting it on both sides of the tip of this putter on a brush. It's a large flat brush and just simply come right across the top. Now remember when I put that pencil line there somewhere? This is where this is gonna go. Push it across. Doesn't matter if it goes down. The blue is gonna shape this color. Now, see me brush, I'm just gonna wipe that, okay? And I'm gonna pick up this good titanium white. Um, see what I'm doing? I'm chiseling it out to the tip of this brush. I'm not just going in there any old way. I'm controlling how I put that on the brush because when you understand how paint's loaded on your brush, you can understand how to control it onto your canvas. So I'll show you why I'm doing it that way. I want to control it on my canvas. Like looking at the reference picture down here, you can see it's kind of, I'm, I see it looking like that. That is why I want to do it like this. So I'm stamping this on. There's a concentrated piece right in the guts of it, but there is some blue between the top and this. Now, this is one side, two sides. I'm starting on one side first. I'm letting it wear away because some bits of this are weak and we're gonna sort of come out here. Now I'm gonna turn it over, just put some of that back into the concentrated area and jingle jangle some of this out there like so. That's what I saw in the reference picture. Now I'm gonna wipe this brush. Okay, he's all wiped. And I want to just waterfy that now. So watch what I do. Infinity. See, see what the infinity done? Hopefully you can see 
all that there. It's not finished yet. So I'm gonna pick up some more just on one side of the brush now. And straight in the guts again, we're concentrating the white bit. There we go. Wipe that again. Now don't press too heavy. We just wanna waterfy that a bit more. Infinity strokes. Okay, we've, we've left our glare there. I'm gonna wipe that over here and then lightly left and right like that. There we go. I'm happy with that. I'm quite happy with that glare. Now before this craft white dries, I just wanna grab the French ultramarine blue and also down here I have some pathetalo blue, phthalo blue to be exact. Pretty much crisscross it into that white And you want to join it into the, I'll get it to the turquoise first. Get it all on there. Get it all on there. There we go. Now use whatever dark blue you've got. I've got French ultramarine here. It's looking a bit lilac -y here. Now I want to start, I'm getting my brush on the edge so I can do these infinity transition angles into that turquoise there. Bring it up, load it up and just splice in where I want it to splice into the turquoise like that, something like that. Get it a bit down here, a bit darker. Now I'm just going to stroke that into there as well. Okay, looking all right. Now I'm gonna pick up the phalo blue. Just wanna get some bits over here. There we go. Pull it in, pull it in, beautiful. And on the other side, because I want it sort of coming down, like I said, there we go. I'm controlling it, see how easy that is? Wipe your brush, pull it into the guts of the painting. Without washing the brush, just picking up the phalo blue. And down the bottom, I wanna crisscross it in the corners, right out here, and then start bringing it, cupping it into this color here. And then water it into the water. There we go, come right across. That white underneath has allowed this to move the way it does for me. I love doing it that way. Everyone's different. If you have a better way to get your colours on and you're happy with before the transitions, by all means do it your way. I can only show you my way. My way isn't the right way. My way is my way. And it's the same with anyone else out there teaching you. Their way is their way. So I'm just mucking around now, getting the vibe of it happening. Okay, now I'm going to get a smaller flat brush just to do some uh, bits and bobs of... Um, transitioning of the turquoise with some white. So I'm just grabbing some turquoise and putting with that white. Now, what I wanna do is come from this turquoise and then just slowly get some splicing into there, dance it on. Now you might need to dry your painting if you feel you have to. I hope this is picking up the colors, yes. So I'm just coming from there and then splicing some ribs into the bluer colour there. So I just want to get some of this there. It's still wet. Now I've washed that brush out, same brush, and I've picked up this mixture here, and I want to start coming from there and getting some of this splicing into the turquoise. Now, I didn't dry it when I did the... Um, turquoise into this blue color but I'm going to dry it now to get this color on there and you'll see the difference how the paints behave. Okay it's all dry but with that French ultramarine I've been pulling it into the white because that's how it reacted onto the canvas to get it the same value and now that it's dry you'll be able to see this a little bit better. So I'll look at the reference it's pretty yeah we've got very flatty looking ones here and it starts just like, it's still the 
infinity movement, but just in these sort of things like this, see? Crisscrossing, crisscrossing, splicing. I call it splicing. I just feel it's very splicey looking. It's probably not the right word, but it's the word I feel comfortable using. I know you splice a rope together, so it's the same principle. And you can see what that's doing. Um, you might have the odd little bit of dark bit here. I'm just noticing just an odd bit. Somewhere there and somewhere, because they're going to be laced with some lights. Okay. Now what I will do is grab some more of that turquoise now that I've dried the painting. I'll transfer, keep this going back onto there so it's splicing a lot more realistic. Uh, and I'll get some of that turquoise back onto the canvas. Okay, we've got lights and darks of this turquoise now. So from here, we'll start splicing this back into that colour. Now you can see it. Now it's been dried. So back down here. Bring it from the turquoise and then in it. Don't just go like that. You've got to kind of trace it into it. It's important. Just to get the vibe of it looking reasonably reasonable. Now we need some of this in the actual turquoise up there. See this bit here that we put? We need some of this. Now I'm going to get it a bit darker than that because you can't see that. So I'm just mixing up a little bit darker of that turquoise. Now grabbing the full colour turquoise and mixing it with there so you can see the colour I've got on there and it's going to this. Not too much of this. And we need just a few bits of dark bits. Where are we? Something lacing around there. I'm just looking at the um, reference to get some reference because that's all it's all it is, it's a reference photo. It's not a copy photo, it's a reference. Giving me, this is how I know where to put all my lights and darks in this painting. Because the reference is showing me. So bits of dark there. So these ones I'm kind of smearing. There we go. So at the moment we're splicing and transitioning those two colours together. You can do it. You can absolutely do it. Now I'm grabbing the white and I want to just taint it with the turquoise there. Because this is going to be the white splicing into the turquoise. But you don't want a pure white. So here's our white. And we've got our glare here. Just gingerly get that infinity splice going. All that white we put on and smeared it in before, that's the underpainting for this. Okay, careful. I don't want too much on my brush I'm feeling. I want some of this radiating out here, like it is in the pick. And there's just bits dancing, dancing with open gaps in between it. Okay, uh, nice piece up here. Over here we've got some... Now, i nearly done it, but I'm going to stop. Sometimes I'm looking here and I'm looking there, here, too much. And I'm, I'm not concentrating on what's happening here. So I need to look over there at the reference, get a vibe, and then just put my vibe of it over here like that, okay? Because we've all done that, I'm pretty sure we have. And that's why I try and tell beginners, just use a reference as reference only. Don't try and copy the exact, because they're never going to sit by side, side by side on the wall and people are going to go, oh yeah, you did well. They're just going to see your version of that reference photo and admire it and like it. The rest now needs to be a lighter value and then that's done. So we want some more of this, just a lighter value of the turquoise. There we go. I think that's going to work. This pile right here. This is a good quality paint I'm using. It's Atelier Acrylics. I only use Atelier because I find they're great. And if something's not broken, why fix it? Sometimes we can get caught in our acrylic journey trying so many different brands and that. But if you're onto something and you like it, just stick with it. If you're on a good thing, stick to it. Now this is just 
any bits of those whites that you might feel are too much, you can use this lighter value to kiss them down. Now, I'm looking at the reference and my photo. I've gone probably a bit detailed than I needed to, but hey, it's my painting. I'm happy with the way it's looking. Now, just practice this before you put it into a full painting. When you practice all procedures, a lot of beginners don't realize most procedures need to be practiced. So when you're doing a painting, you know, people say, you make it look easy. Well, no, I'm not making it look easy. I'm doing it because I've practiced the procedure and it'll be that easy for you as well if you do the same thing. As a beginner, once you're a seasoned artist, you can go and start doing your own thing. Now I've dried this because we're gonna add the glare shooting down into your water. Now, some of you might just think, well, that's white, but it's not white. It's a very pale, very pale turquoise. Now, there's our light source on your painting. You've got to bring it from there to there. Don't worry about putting it in to the turquoise. We're just going to come here, okay? Just to make it easy, because it is easy. So I'll grab some of this craft paint. There's no retarder or nothing in this. You don't need much of it. And we're going to slowly add, this is a bit chalky, that stuff, so it might grip onto the canvas and trip me up. So that's why I'm going to use the craft paint. Now we want to grab some turquoise and then just kind of get it very white, but turquoisey white. See, that's too dark, so I'll bring all of that into there. Now that looks, I'm just looking at the reference for the color. That's a little bit too dark still. So what I'll do is I'll just grab what's in my brush. Okay. I'll grab another dollop of this craft paint over here and then I'll just mix that together. I'm lightening it down, brightening it up, whatever. <laughs> now if I want to darken that with some more turquoise, I'm not going to pick up the raw turquoise because I'll just turn it into that or if not stronger again. So I want to get a bit of this value and then just slowly play with it. There's no rush to quickly get this mixed and get it onto the canvas. It's all about understanding how to mix your paints so they'll work for you because at the end of the day when you do all this stuff, you got a massive smile on the face because you can do it. So I'll wipe it on the side here, just like that, so there's no big heavy surprises. And then from about here, I wanna come about to this point here and from about here, I want to come out to about this point here. But we want the, the pull down mark to finish about here. Okay, so let's go. I'll start in the middle first, just nice and light. Just pull it, hit the canvas, and then just pull it from here and pull it. My per I'm looking here, but my peripheral vision can see that dot that I put there, and I'm just, coming to that. Now don't get scared and think, oh no, I'm gonna turn mine into snot. You won't turn it into snot. You can do this, I'm telling you now. I tell you, to be quite honest, I was a bit worried doing this, but as soon as my brush started hitting the canvas, I know I can do it. You want them, you don't wanna do a bit here and a bit there, because they'll end up all crookedy crooked, and people will probably wonder what happened to your glare. So where's most of it? Yeah, most of it's up here up here, most of it's up here. And then, there we go, where's that peripheral? There it is there. Let it come out. I'm just wiping the bulk off that, just to see if we can, there we go, I wanna get a, bit more stronger just here in this bit here. Very lightly, lightly. Look, not much is coming off the brush, but enough is coming off to show on the painting. I think that'll do. Now what I want to do, I'm going to use my detailed brush. I call it, it's, it's a dagger brush. It came in a packet, but I can get detail with this. I can shape something. And I want to draw the jellyfish onto the canvas. This reference photo will be in the traceable link below this video. Click on that traceable link. All relevant traceables and reference photos are there for my tutorials. So I'm going to freehand this, but you can print the actual reference picture out and make a, a, you can transfer it onto your canvas with some carbon paper or transferring chalk. 
So I'll grab this white color here, this very tainted one. It's the craft white, because it needs to be soft. And I'm gonna use this brush, because the vibe I want on my canvas, I'll show you down here so you'll know what's in my mind, even though we're not in Carolina, I'm in Perth, Western Australia. I want the outside edge sharp, okay? But I wanna be able to wipe the snot off that brush and bl blur this into the painting. That's what's gonna be going on in my mind. Now you know what's in my mind, you'll be able to do the same thing on your canvas, okay? So grab your mouse stick, I'm gonna, cause I'm gonna need that. A mouse stick, everybody, is just a stick with a cork on the end. You know, you're laying across your canvas so you can rest your hand on it. I didn't know what they were called until I knew what they were. Now, the actual moon jelly is right in the guts of this glare. So it's pretty much, let me see, where are we? It's about that shape. So I'll make it my own shape. So I want a nice, very thin line. I'll start it off, I'll get the shape that I want first. Where are we, over here? And is nice and tight around here. So it's pretty much that first. Watch how I do it and you'll be able to do the same vibe. Okay, um, now this tucks right around. You can put any fish here you want, really. Little rainbow fish, a clownfish, man of war, anything. Uh, pretty much there, okay, that'll do. And then we wanna make a sort of scallops like this. That'll do, just like that. See me line, it's very faint, but it's there. You need it faint because it's jelly, remember? And then we have a lot of stuff on the inside, which is about, well, what I'll do, We'll get this vibing up. So I'm gonna put the, the line there now. Watch what I do here. Pretty much like doing a, a teardrop, I suppose. From about there. Now I'm gonna wipe the business off my brush. Okay, it's wiped off. And see this brush, this is why I'm using it. I wanna be able to just softly. You can do this, take your time. It's all about taking your time. We're gonna softly leave that hard edge there and mist, blur, smoky, cloudify this side of that line. Grab some more of the color, put it on your brush and let it fade away. So you haven't got an actual line there. You're getting rid of that line. There's no lines on animals or in nature. Just remember that. See, I can still see the line there. I'm gonna fade it away. That's why I did the line very lightly. Get some more. And that's pretty much heavy all around here for now. So I just want to get to that line and destroy it. I'm scrambling it away into the, the moon jelly's body. I know what it's called because I asked Google. So we're going to do this around the whole body, but appropriately. I'm not, sometimes when I'm doing this, I might not talk. It gives you the opportunity just to enjoy your cup of tea while you watch and learn if you're learning from it or just enjoy watching the visuals of my video. If it was your first time here, share, like and subscribe and do give me a comment. I need comments. Ask me questions in the comment and they get brought out in my Friday night lives. Now this white is going to be coloured with the rainbow colours. Well, it's only two colours really. French ultramarine I'll be using mixed with white to get that purpley colour and a bit of um, violet. Now I want to tell you to put the um, violet colour and the purpley colour in there, why I'm not just painting that on, this is the pretty much the primer for that to stand out. Otherwise you won't get the true vibe of it. You'll see what I mean when I actually put that colour on. But I'm just getting this, I'm destroying that outside line that I did and I'm just taking my time. You'll notice I'm turning the camera on and off just so I don't bore the living buggery out of you at all. And I'm just sort of coming from the edge of that line and bringing it in. 
stop, analyze, look at your work, see where it needs fine tuning. See this dagger brush, it's got a curve on it. I can get around this curve, it's perfect for this little one here. This, this shape of creature that I'm painting here. I'm gonna take some of that off there now and I just wanna pretty much get a glare like this. That's it. We got white there because it's got some heavier stuff in the middle of it. Now I've got me violet, so I'm gonna pull some of that over here with some of that, where are we, some of that mixture. That's what I've been putting the actual body on there with. And I want some of this, that's too strong. I need, I'll get a bit more of the white. Don't want it too strong. Just I'm just looking at the reference roughly for a average How's that looking? Yeah, that's it. See how I put that there? You don't want it solid. You want to see through this color. So I've loaded my brush up and I'm going to get rid of a lot of it. Okay. Because on this side of it, it's got this kind of volatile color. So I need to, see it's going to sit on this color now. Get a little bit on the brush, not too much. And I just want it to, Fade over that side there like that. Just not too much on your brush. You don't want big hints of this. Let me look at the reference just, oh, there we go. Yeah, okay, so it's coming up here and then it fades over that side. That's it. See, I could still see through it. Now I'm gonna pick up the turquoise and we wanna bit of this colour. Let's hope this one's not too, yeah that's alright. This colour coming, uh, all that white you put on there now, it's this here, where are we? Right again, you don't want a white edge. That white is primed up this colour, otherwise it wouldn't have shown. And we're going to just get rid of the edge and then bring this over the white. And this is the colour of his body. Now if you can't see too much of it here, all you can do is paint a bit more white and then put this colour back over it. But it's got to be very little. It does help if you're going to paint from my videos to watch them a couple of times just to really get the vibe of what you need to do and get yourself set up. Okay, and it's all around here as well, coming up. Now we're gonna start putting the inside detail into this and how I wanna do that. I'm looking at the reference. I'll get some of that off there, a bit too thick. And we've got it about this high and it's coming down about there. Okay, right to the edge, cupping around. And we just need to Put our brush on and pull it down into the body like so and then it's got a nice brighter bit on top of that again so pretty much towards there and then bring it down heavy at the top but leave this bit starting to be faded and opened up where's that color that i just mixed start from the bottom here as well boom boom you don't have to go boom though you get carried away when you're filming There's a lot of dots in here, so obviously you can't see them. I'm just going to quickly add a bit of extra um, turquoise into that, just so you can see them. And these are all pretty much, well, from what I can see, around there. Just little dotty things. Not too much, don't overkill it. Where, where is it? Okay, about there. So I'm grabbing the uh, violet again, pretty much continuing over to this side. So it's coming around and down there like that. Where are we? We'll bring it up a bit. I'm just gonna chisel my brush, load it up and chisel it the way I want. 
because I want this up about here and that's joining from there. There we go. And from the bottom it's nice and glary. There, there, and here it's glaring right up. I'm picking up some of the stronger violet colour just to get some of those dots on this side. Within that, just inside jelly detail. Now I'm getting the white tainted with the turquoise again because I'm putting the actual white in here now but it's got turquoise tainted and there's a bright spot within his body about here somewhere. So I'm going to get that in there. It's like a, like a button or something. Now my brush is full of paint. I'm going to wipe it just so as I can blur that down into that colour there. There we go. See what I've done there? And I think there's another little bit. Oh, there's just some minute bits under here. And then we've got another one on the other side for the um, violety colour. And just along here, there's some, get a bit of brightness and then blur it down, blur it down so that you've got no line there. It's just a shiny blur on the edge of his jelly. Take your time, you can do it. Now I'm doing the same again, but with the violet colour. I'm getting the, there's because there's another buttony white glary glowy thing within his body over here. So I want to put that in there. So I'll make that. And then I'll just glare that down into there. Smooth it into it. There we go. I think I needed a little bit more harder on here. Yeah, here we go. Let's go this way. Okay, wipe the business off the brush and pull some of that down. It's very little stuff, but you've got to learn these things. It just makes art, it just gives your art that vibe and makes it full of bullshit. And then the same again out here, a bit more of the violet into that white, and we're finding a glare of white, violety colour on this side coming through the body. Now, is that too violety? And yeah, that's okay, that's okay. You want to get to the edge, edge, and then just break it into the body so there's no line. This is how you get rid of lines. I've seen people do beautiful animals, but they've left that hard line on the edge. That hard line, if you just do this to what I'm doing here, like put it there and then just smear it into the body. It just adds curvature and shape and dimension to your subject. There we go. Now we're going to do the rest of its tails. So I've got the violety colour again for the violety side. So it's pretty much little lines like this. They're going a bit too thick. You want them finer. And how are they? There's just lots of them. So all right, I'll do lots of them coming down on this half. Uh, there, yeah, there are gaps in between, so you don't want it solid there. You know how we do sky windows in tree foliage? We want some water windows in this stuff here. So we get it pretty much about there-ish. Okay. Now I'm going to chisel my brush and try and get these nice. And uh, is it right to the edge? No. There's a, it's going out a bit. They're not right at the edge. And we want, if I can get some of these, Let me find another brush. I'd rather try this on camera for you so you go through the same ordeal that I'm going through. I don't want to make out like it's that easy. I mean, I've got to try as well. So I'm just picking up a fine detailed brush, the one I normally do my signature with. And let's see if I can get these. There we go, that's a little bit better. And I want these looping around. They're, they're kind of looping around like so. 
Now, probably can go, some of it can have a bit of a marbly mix with some of that violet in there, just so you can see. I'm finding it difficult because I'm upright. If you're on a table, you can just take your time, get your nice little hairy brushes. Even the um, Posca paint pen will be great for this. So I'm going to disguise some of those fat ones by putting some skinnier ones in front of it. And now we've got to put the this colorish on this side. From, from the body there and just loop them out. The, the M1s can be quite tasselly and there's just a lot of it all coming from here. See now I'll get a little bit brighter. Hopefully you can see this. Very, we're, we've pretty much created the transparency of the jellyfish, of the moon jelly. See, now these lighter bits will stand out over those darker bits, see? On their own, they don't quite stand out. Nice and skinny if you can help it. At home, you can go a lot more slower and more patiently, but I'm kind of pressured with the camera going to, you know, I don't want to be here for several hours trying to show you how to do a painting. I'll just get to the point. And then we just got some tasseling around, really loose out there. Now we'll do the rest of it. I'm picking up the turquoise color again, because this, the rest of it's turquoise. Obviously some light has just hit this corner of it. So we're creating some other turquoisey ones coming from here, just so they can join on to what I'm about to paint. And it's a bit cloud-like, misty-like. So we'll have a long one here. Okay, something long about, oh, it can even come a little bit longer. Okay, just literally. And um, something here. Now wipe the nonsense off your brush and let's get some, you know, the thin flesh film stuff that they have the light shining through. So what I'm doing there, you know, like when you've got a cloud, you're creating the cloud. So I'm just looking at the, the picture there to get some of this. See what I'm doing? Very little on my brush. We've got a nice smeary bit out here and something all the way down here now it's the turquoisey color so it's sitting on top of this um, French ultramarine and where are we yeah and it's pretty smoky with this color here it looks nice and I think it's gonna it's easy to do when you know what to do and it's just gonna make people go wow how did you do that See, I've got a line there, so I really want to disguise that. Now, well, we've got a, some hard lines in it. I'll get back to that later. Bit more of a film there. That's it. And a bit more of a film around here, something more distinctive. There we go, coming from there. And a bit more of a heavier line there. Okay, I've got that. Now what I need to do is get the sharper color on there. This bit here, there's a nice hard bit right in that. Come up, join it right up in that stuff there. There's a nice little hard bit just around there like that. And there's some, got the hard bit there. And we got some bits filtering up there. And this is gonna have actual white on top of it. I'm going to get more white onto my brush. Now I'm just looking at the reference. There's a shimmer of light here, hitting this, like that. And there's some, some there. Just like that. How's that looking? That's looking okay. And then have a look at your picture. 
Sometimes the picture might need something that the photo doesn't have to make it look more arty and realistic. These have got some more white, wider tips on these shorter ones just to break them up from all that blurry stuff, I suppose. And we might have a smear in there somewhere. Now it doesn't have it in the reference photo, but I'm gonna add it there. I feel it'll add more zing to my painting. So I'm grabbing this paint, uh, this brush, and I'm gonna get a, those lighter ones that were put on there, I wanna darken up a few more, just to give it some, I don't know, maybe extra bullshit. big white glare that we put there, don't put it on that. I'll just sign this and we'll whack a frame on it and see how she looks. And just remember, all my tutorial paintings are for sale. And I want to use this opportunity to thank my YouTube members who support me every month and my patrons who get early access to my content when I do have it. Be sure to check out all the links in the description below. I have over 500 videos on my channel here, all for beginners and advanced painters. So many different subjects. Okay, let's whack a frame on that. There we go. That's not too shabby. We've made a moon jelly. Cora Victoria jellyfish under the water with the light coming through. And I know you can do it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that show. I enjoyed painting that and I hope you can produce the same thing and put it on my Facebook group page. If you're not a member, the link's in the description below. Once again, a big thank you to Dentist So. Okay, if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends, but if you don't, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.